Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 577, and holy shit, I'm in Pittsburgh, PA. Mayhem Studios here, and we're, we're talk, ready to talk professional wrestling, but mostly probably Netflix. Let's be honest about it. Also with us in studio, we got Chad the Chad. Hello, hello. What did you think of Transformers 5? <laughs> Colorful yet lacking. Oh, yes. Also with us, Mutilator Larry. I did not watch that piece of garbage. <laughs> I just wanted you to be, you know. won. You won the theater game this week. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. I mean, I need to watch a, a 1985 Transformers movie to cleanse the palate myself. Also, with us, <laughs> I'm looking so impressed. <laughs> I'm so Dutters. excited to be here. Dutters. Thanks for having me. I'm having a great time. Dutters is with us for at least a little bit. Thank you for the invitation. I just saw my face. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, well, welcome. Welcome. You'll notice she has the seat closest to the exit. Yes. <laughs> I'm wearing a special shirt, though. I don't know if you can see my special shirt. What, what is this? What it's is my it? Luchador of the Dead shirt from my friend Rizdefer. Nice. Hey. <laughs> Speaking of from Monroeville, that got a wow. shout out on 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 Ride Along. Ride, Ride along. along. Yeah, I almost said the yeah. other thing again. Thank you. Uh, is the Riz. Hi, Sorg. And speaking of Netflix, I have not watched Glow yet. And also I did, however, watch some Joy of Painting. So I am very <laughs> well into it. What's going on in that? Uh Bob Ross paints things. Nice. Happy, mm. happy little women's See wrestling. It. Happy See little women's I'm wrestling. Not spoiling anything. <laughs> I mean, there might be cabins in there sometimes. There happy might, little there might trees. be happy little trees. <laughs> it's all in your imagination. Yes, and then um, oh, oh, oh! Also with us oh. from Poughkeepsie, New York, a figment of my imagination, Mad Mike. Hey, hey, um, hey, um, Missy. Yes, dear. Who's who's this sword guy? I thought we had Matt taking over permanently now. Uh, I don't know. This guy showed up at my door and all was like, "Hey, I'm here to podcast." And I'm like, "Who are you?" Um, that's that, let's be honest. That's how a lot of people have. Uh, Chad, that's how you ended up on the show. The show. Yeah, <laughs> Matt, Matt had to call hey. off sick. Hey, what's up? Uh, I guess this is your house. I'm here to podcast. Yeah. But, and by the way, it's 2006. <laughs> what's a podcast? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm here to talk loudly while you record. <laughs> Make so, sounds with my or mouth. Or so Lunchbox tells me. I don't. I. I don't know. He drove here. Wait. What is Lunchbox? <laughs> we can totally blame Lunchbox for all we of could. this. We could. He we is could. a catalyst. Well done. Oh, oh, of course. It's so simple. It is. A lot of this. Now. A lot of this is Lunchbox. Well, like, let's be honest. Like, and he then he left us in the lurch. Then he walked away to his new project. That's one and, hell of a rib. Right, it's right. one hell of a rip. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can check us out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can drop us a line at that email address. Good times! Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. 412-206-WMS0. Uh, so don't die, awesome Larry. Mike. Don't die, Larry. <laughs> Over there. <laughs> we didn't give you the one with the switch. He's got the one with the switch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this looks like he's pistol? dabbing over the corner. <laughs> I, I went to cough this way, and then I thought it'd be rude to cough on him. So I, <laughs> I just thought he's like, "Okay, DJ Perkins." You later, Larry's getting down. <laughs> oh, the chat room is already talking about how great of a show this is going to be. <laughs> oh man, oh, we haven't even got to any awesome. wrestling. Get all that mayhem Katie's show. We're in the chat going. room. Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook. We're live every Tuesday around 10 p.m. Eastern or so. Um, and and of course, live at wrestlingmayhemshow.com gives you a shortcut to that. 
Uh, and we've been pretty good about that lately, actually. Uh, please uh, uh, subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. Uh, leave comments, especially on that iTunes, and rate it. Uh, please leave a video or check out the video versions on the YouTube and the Facebook for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Check out the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group where a lot of conversation happens. And man, I got a list of things from that tonight that we can dive into. And uh, also, thanks to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Thanks to our fan of the show, dollar level people uh bo diggity ed burke the matthew foundation for podcast betterment Tragar at breaking wordpress.com alex cars of power to the smarts on the twitter and occupy pro wrestling new podcast coming soon a rebooted Great. podcast actually and bobby f j town who is like spent all this time he's gonna be uh bobby f p town very soon as much as he's been spending in pittsburgh also at the pocky club five dollar level thank you our friend on the it's west coast all. tina keys and uh our other buddy christopher bishop i don't know where he lives Definitely not P-Town, sir. I think that's why it's not. Definitely not P-Town. Let's just say Poughkeepsie. Poughkeepsie. You guys can uh, contribute to the show as well. Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. You get Mayhem Show gold at the $5 level. And uh, it's going to be a fun one this week. It is, it's, it's, it's a fun one this week. Um, <laughs> so, right off the bat, let's talk lady things. Um, oh. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we're up to, we're off to a good start <laughs> yes no 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 but Let's, but seriously i think a lot of us and i, and I want to be as uh spoiler free <laughs> as possible i think a lot of the cameos have been out there so i think we can mention that but i, I kind of just want to have a broad discussion because a lot of us have seen <laughs> most av what you shouldn't say broad discussion. <laughs> good games context um <laughs> But no, Glow premiered on Netflix, and I know here in Pittsburgh, I, I, I don't know if we mentioned it on the show, but like there are billboards everywhere mm-hmm. for Glow. I, yes, you, everywhere. You typically don't see the television, like you go to New York City, LA, you, you see like the television and yeah. movie like billboards everywhere, right? Yeah. And and I can't remember the last time I've seen something like that in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Which is funny because yeah. it's like the city has contributed nothing to the show itself. No. No. Like, no. Not one bit. The setting, nothing. No, I'm, I'm trying to think it of any of the cameo. Here. I don't There's think no Pittsburgh people. I'm trying to think here. of any of the cameo guys are like Pittsburgh people. No, I don't think they oh, are. No, they're all they're all LA. They're all like, LA yeah, people. Yeah. Not, I mean, I mean like, it was shot in like there were some shots that were in uh, one of the PW the PWG arena. Yes, or, yes, area. yes. And it was like, oh, there's that place, and it. But yeah, it, I don't know why they're advertising here because. Maybe because There's a wrestling they know it's a big, yeah. That's what I mean. Maybe they know it's a big wrestling market. I'm curious. I'm curious. Are they maybe targeting certain markets where Glow was on television? That could be also. True. I mean, it was on cable, yeah. but still, like, not everybody had all of the networks back then in the 1985, right? So, yeah. eh. but but anyways, it's out. It's um. I uh, my I'm about seven episodes in I think and uh, I'll finish have to finish the rest tomorrow but but so far like I'm really happy with it as a like his portrayal of wrestling I thought has been pretty realistic as far as training I, I made a comment I don't know if I tweeted it or not but I was like you know this show represents wrestling training better than any tef- tough enough season yeah. oh yeah right yeah I'd say it's true yeah yeah so maybe maybe not the first one. That was before the wellness. The very policy, first yeah. season of Tough Enough with mm-hmm. like Josh and Maven and Idia and all that. Like yeah. that's probably the closest besides this. Yeah. Because they didn't really know what kind of thing they were doing with the first season of Tough Enough. So they just showed like soup to nuts what they were doing. Right. But this definitely goes into a lot more aspect of putting together a company. Like it even goes into like the ring crews and the lighting and the referees and that stuff. Like it goes into everything. Yeah. So I, it, it, like I, I finished Air Race, so I'm not going to spoil anything, but it it's fantastic. I think. Like, and if if you're looking for something to binge watch, like if you get a summer shower or something like that, it's ten episodes, about thirty five minutes each. It's a quick watch, but it is fun as shit. I misinterpret that as watching it in the shower. Yeah, uh, you can also do that. I mean, if you if you have that hookup, it, you know, 
Get that life proof case. Um, what what other what who else has any thoughts on this? Have seen it so far. Katie, have you seen it yet? Yes, you have seen it. What what do you think so far? Oh, I love it. It's so much fun. It's the story's addicting. Mm-hmm. All the stories within the show are addicting. I don't know who's going to be my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it. I all right. I have to say this. Awesome Kong is fucking amazing. Okay, I didn't yeah. realize Jesus. until. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, she's this is phenomenal. Lunchbox, by the way. That should bring yeah, it back. Yeah, we need this. lunchbox. Yeah, just to make him watch this. Mm-hmm. With I mean, all I, the scenes of Awesome Kong. I, I think, uh, like once once more of us finish it, we're also going to do a full spoiler yes. review just of Glow in general. Oh, yeah. That season yeah, like, is so show so short that I don't think it needs a long period of time before spoilers can be let. No, out. no, no, no. I think before oh, the no, end of this no. week, we it's can fully do some acceptable stuff, but... to watch that whole season. Absolutely. Like after week next week, two. we can pull it out of the bag. But I think I think. Uh, people had a busy weekend and it's it's understandable to to kind of sit on a little bit so um yeah you know I, so i saw something bef- like maybe a week or two ago that alluded to like her being connected to glow i watched those and until like right before i was bringing you guys on tonight i didn't like find the evidence like oh no that is her yeah in glow uh, oh yeah the, that's 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 her the, what, what is the, she uh, welfare queen is her character queen. in this one yeah <laughs> welfare queen Welfare Queen K, which is, well, I mean, they don't say And I K, love, but. There, there's a certain point where they kind of, they make fun of the fact, but it was very obviously, like, this was the 1985, right? And they yeah. talked about how, and we talked about this with certain, well, actually, we talked about this with certain wrestlers that are getting new gimmicks on the Andy Mayhem show in this fashion, <laughs> where the, like, really horrible stereotypes, like, you look kind of Asian, so now you know karate and... <laughs> you know, and 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 and, and so on, um, and it, it, it was it was just you know one of those kind of things that you kind of point at you know, and you kind of see this if you watch old WWF from like 1985 too, right? Um, or current SmackDown from tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that too. Um, <laughs> mm, mm. But uh, no, I, it's been a really good show. I, you know, you you get a lot of the vibe i think a little bit from from orange with new black um you know obviously the same a lot of the same people are behind this too uh so i, th- I think it's really good and they, i hope they they kind of continue with it i presume those have finished it it's pretty wide open for them to keep going yes for oh this. yeah definitely yeah, for if i understand the history of glow at least two seasons <laughs> so, <laughs> right yeah I, the way the way it sh- looks like it's being shot i think they could easily get like Three or four seasons. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, so it, it realistic. So, so Glow actually did run for two seasons. Sorry, I we're what, so, what? we're getting some interaction from the chat room. Yeah, I was I was bringing them up to see okay. what's going on. Uh, what's going on? Well, Brandon, my, Brandon just caught me with this producer comment. Missy, best producer in the world. Glow is like an all, all female version of Tough Enough and Saved by the Bell because the eighties theme. Yes. <laughs> Oh, well, oh. It, it, or it's also because you also have to throw a little bit of Lucha Underground in there. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, there is a little bit. It, yeah, you absolutely. Did it comic, there is a little bit. Well, I was wondering. So, so because we we had called out the fact that it's Chavo's gym, like that's the name of the gym uh-huh. that, that they're training in. Then I looked it up. I looked up the actual history, and obviously, there's some things that are very, very different from the actual history. It's a show, okay. Uh, I mean, if, if you're kind of curious, go, just look up the actual Glow Wikipedia page, not the Netflix one, and see the actual history of it. Um, but so, and, and, you know, so that's at, at, at Ch- you know Chavo's thing. Actually, I think it's Mondo Guerrero actually was a trainer on the show, yeah, like on the original okay. show, like in, well, in uh, 1985. Netflix, Netflix also has an actual documentary about. Yes, they do. Glow. Yes, they do. Like I want, I wanted to make sure I finished the series before I watched that documentary. I uh, watched. I can't wait to watch that. I watched the documentary when it first came out on Netflix. Mm-hmm. I plan to rewatch it when I'm done with the series. What's it called? Uh, this documentary. I'm sure. Yeah, people... it, I think it's just called the Gorgeous Ways of Wrestling. Or yeah. Something like that. Okay. Yeah, and they talk with a lot of the people who were there, and I think they may do a reunion thing or something like that. So um... that was really good. That came out. Of, it's been a. Has it been a little while since that came oh, out? Oh, yeah. It's been a couple of years. Yeah. Okay, I was going to yeah. say, I remember watching that. That Before, was really good. I think that's. I mean, I think that's one of those things that sparked this going into development as mm-hmm. netflix does right so you know what's up well it was kind of funny because i was having as disembodied voice katie just move your mouth 
<laughs> so I was having lunch today with Bethany, mm-hmm. and she is all about you know women's empowerment, and different things like that. So she was really super excited about Glow, and she watched it. And I, I remember seeing her Facebook post about, "Oh my God, please tell me people have watched this because I really need I really need to talk about you this. need this to be a thing." Yeah, because yeah, she was on so, Facebook. Oh yeah, I I, w- I want to see if I could bring her on the show. <laughs> yeah, she well, when I talked to her today, she wants to come on the show, but she wants to come on Excellent. like after people have watched it. So I think next week would be a good time to to talk her about coming on for it uh Shagar mentions they are targeting markets that had high youtube hits of the wrestlelicious rap yes i think <laughs> i see we're responsible so for that one so it's localized within a 10 block radius around mayhem studio <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait, back, back to the comment with with bethany it was kind of interesting because she has a kid um he's not all that old i mean he's he's old enough to to start having some interest in different things but he's not old enough to be able to watch glow because of certain criteria mm-hmm. that, that mm-hmm. just it's not safe for kids. There's, yeah. <laughs> However, he happens to walk in shortly after one of the adult scenes <laughs> and thankfully it had already passed that and it was on to the next thing and she was like, oh, we're going to change this but because it was wrestling, he had all sorts of questions about like, oh, what was that? That looks really cool. Can I watch that? So she had to find an alternative for him to mm-hmm. learn about Glow without watching Glow. <laughs> hmm. mm-hmm. So the... <laughs> documentary that you guys are talking about she actually brought that up and she's watching it with him nice to, to nice. educate him about women's wrestling and it's more than just that's a, that's a nice gateway yeah that's a, that's a really nice gateway and it's, she it's should also go sit him down to watch Lucha underground <laughs> it's your answer for everything though yeah. <laughs> it really is yeah, well, it is i mean i mean justifiably of course but uh but still uh, so, so it's the, the yeah. it's actually glow the story of the gorgeous ladies of wrestling and it was 2012 it came out the mm-hmm. documentary oh, and, and it, it might not have even gone to Netflix a couple years after that too because mm-hmm. I don't think it wasn't like a Netflix original or anything mm-hmm. I don't think so uh, but again you know I think they put that on there I mean that's what they do I mean that's how we have all these Adam Sandler movies because they know that's what people are watching are Adam Sandler <laughs> movies right yeah so <laughs> yes and, and and you see the connection because well we didn't get to. I guess we can mention a couple of them. Again, a lot of this is out there already. Uh, one of them was spoiled on a gift before I watched the show. Uh, but there's a lot of Lucha guys in there that pop up, mm-hmm. you know, that mm-hmm. they're involved. So I think, um, and I, I don't know, there might be a little bit of crossover. There is crossover in some of the people involved in production of the show. At least uh, Chavo has at least a little, I don't know if he has a stunt or, or something like that in the show. I haven't seen it. But I, I saw. Uh, I, saw I, didn't, I didn't know anything. He he is attached on IMDb to the show, but it's only for an episode, and I think it's for a stunt or something. Um, so okay. or maybe he might even be a stunt coordinator. So he, was, he, he might be in the background. Right. The I, I feel like if I I have not seen the show, I feel like we don't get to actual wrestling matches in front of audiences until the final episode uh, on this. Um, right? It gets it gets there beforehand. It gets there beforehand. Like okay, okay. Yeah. Um, because because um, it, it, it just seems like say, it's on that trajectory for to me. To me. Um, uh, one one thing we haven't mentioned in this. For those of you who aren't familiar, Mark Marin plays the the uh, produ- the the proprietor of Glow, basically uh, the director. He, director, because the proprietor basically. is this other guy. Yeah, uh, he is fantastic in this. Like I, I had never seen any of Marin's um, shows or anything like that. I only listened to one episode of his podcast one time. He is really, really good in this. To be fair, if you've watched Marin the show, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, like it's not. It's just him. He's not really stretching. Let's just okay. Say. So, so like Aaron Eminem and Eight Mile. Oh, hey, you you yourself play a really good you, which is a really cantankerous, uh, angry man uh, that feels like he's been shit on all the time. You're perfect for a Hollywood director. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Like, all right, yeah. Right. I mean, I mean, I haven't, I haven't watched it yet, and I'm like, that's Mark Maron. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, exactly. you're, you're, you're describing <laughs> I mean, Mark Maron. He's or Paul Giamatti. One he's of the two. <laughs> it's probably Mark Maron. He's, I'd be okay with either oh of those God, two. Oh my God! I want to see this with Paul Giamatti now. <laughs> <laughs> he's fantastic. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying, that's just kind of him. It seems that was one of the pluses gotcha. I saw when I first saw the trailers for it. I saw Mark Maron, and I was like, well, I'm sold. <laughs> like Me he too. was narrating the trailer and everything I'm like this is it this is great yeah. yeah this is gonna be fine yeah absolutely so um but no go check it out we'll have further discussion uh somewhere probably a special or something or maybe, maybe we'll come back to it in the spoiler version next week or something so <laughs> god bless you thank you hey, but don't get too sneezy you got to come back here because uh, we're gonna do that thing now so we don't 
we, we don't keep you here too long. <laughs> um, so so uh, Larry and Katie saw something this week, this past weekend. That was Transformers. No, no, no that was definitely <laughs> to a degree. Definitely well, to a degree better than Transformers. This is, this is true. This is true. Large God. things destroying buildings. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh. You're yes, you're accurate there. Now, Katie, you've seen Kaiju Big Battle before. Correct. I saw uh, them at the Gathering of the Juggalos. At the Gathering of the Juggalos. Mm-hmm. So I, I, will, will, I, I first want to ask Larry his thoughts. First, for the, the uninitiated, what is Kaiju Big Battle? Um, Kaiju Big Battle is Godzilla mixed with uh, comic books, mixed with wrestling. Mixed with arts and crafts. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> That's accurate. That's not, it's accurate. I've never heard that explanation before, but you're 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 fucking right. It is. Mm-hmm. So so you got to see your first kaiju big battle. I did. It was at the August Wilson Center here, I, right downtown, a, a, a mile from the house here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what did you think? Um, well, we started the night off with going through three queue lines. To get to a bar, be just because like the logistics like for ticketing was so weird. So then you got to a bar. This is not a wrestling venue. This oh, no, is no, not no, a place no, that no, has no. had this wrestling a, before. This is a fine arts <laughs> and performance center. Yes, in the middle like, of Pittsburgh. Like you show and me a picture, and I'm me, just like, is that a theater? Mm, yeah. yeah, and yeah. they start off by selling you a sippy cup full of bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the picture. It was amazing. <laughs> And then you go into the auditorium, and there's a ring on the stage, and people are filling into the seats, and then they're also having people go onto the stage and surround the ring. Uh-huh. So you can either stand up ringside or like be in the crowd in the dark. And uh, there were cardboard buildings all over the place. In the ring. In the ring, in outside the ring. of the ring. Oh, um, okay. They were they're there to bring new buildings in. Okay. After the matches, um, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so Katie, you saw again. You 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 saw, you've seen the show before. Mm-hmm. Um, again, a different setting. One in the morning around Juggalos in the middle of a field. Yes. <laughs> versus you know actually in a set. You know in a setting. <laughs> what, what? It was complete. Like you've seen both spectrums. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> You've seen how versatile <laughs> how versatile these this kaiju big battle can be <laughs> and will be. Oh, this was a classy event. It was classy. They had a VIP section for mm-hmm. uh Mr. Carnegie Mellon Mellon, which was a watermelon wearing a top hat. <laughs> Sitting no, in a chair. No, 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 no. Oh, Seriously? Yeah. I swear yeah. to God. Yes. That yes. was the whole storyline. Oh, uh Dr. Cube kidnaps oh. Carnegie Mellon. Oh, Doctor Q! Did he have a monocle? No, 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 you, no, 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 he, no. Seriously, they had. Um, he was. It was a watermelon with like a, a black coat draped around him, with a top <laughs> hat on him. <laughs> and they were like interviewing the melon and translating, basically, because you know it's an inanimate object, so I couldn't talk. <laughs> and uh, at the end of the show, uh, the baby face d- defeats Doctor Cube. And holds Carnegie Mellon up. Is the babyface American Beetle? It was American Beetle. Okay. Yes. I've and seen. I've seen a few of these. <laughs> he, I've seen a few he, of these. he holds up. He hold, holds up Carnegie Mellon and accidentally like drops him and he explodes all over <laughs> <laughs> the ring. And then it was just a hard finish. Hard like stop. That's the end of the show. <laughs> it's like well, people were he taking did. pieces of watermelon as souvenirs. There's a question from Bobby. Did he see a wrestling waffle? No, I saw a French toast. Yes, <laughs> it's not. There was no waffle. They're, they're two waffle. different things. Yeah, they they had a wrestling French toast, which was incredible. The fact that it got into the ring alone, yeah, was worth the price of admission. It's a large waffle. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very large waffle. Um, is so it, it's that and their monsters and there's there's I mean it's kaiju is oh yeah the monsters right it's, they had a dust bunny that was actually dusty like whenever it like took a bump a cloud of dust, dust went bunny. everywhere I remember the dust bunny <laughs> so wait there's a wrestling version of pig pen that's dressed like a bunny yeah yep pretty much that's yeah. amazing yep I think I, I think clearly I, I clearly went to Pittsburgh on the wrong weekend you did <laughs> you did oh you did yeah yes if I was doing the midweek war this would be number one. 
for me this Chachi week. needs to have his next wedding during a kaiju big battle event. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, so With the mayor still presiding. Yes. <laughs> uh, the mayor is a wrestling fan. He has been yeah. known to appear or, or patron uh, KSWA. I don't know if he has since he's been mayor, but I know he was he was a pretty regular uh, uh, fixture there. So I think VOW was sponsoring the event because there were a lot of those guys backstage. Really? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Maybe they provided the ring or something. That's what I'm wondering, or if they were in the suits. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. Actually, I think there was a call out to work the show yeah. from from the promoter there. <coughs> so, which is interesting because they do currently mostly all deathmatch shows. Yeah, I dude. <laughs> When like, I first got there, I was expecting like tables underneath some of those cardboard boxes, mm-hmm. and I, I was expecting it to be. Nasty. Yeah, because you've seen because you've seen VOW. Yeah. No, no. Um, um. I believe I believe the last show I see the seen them promote was No Fucks Given. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Just just straightforward. Well, um, okay, it, we talked about it a little bit. Attendance was pretty good for this, right? It was sold out. It was sold out. Wow. Yeah, they that's were, awesome. They were talking about how great the. We couldn't get a poster going out. Like wow. We sold out of the Pittsburgh poster. You didn't mention the unicorn. Oh my there god! Unicorn. There was. There was a unicorn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There was. There was a. There was a unicorn in a spandex suit and what looked like a motorcycle helmet with like a ponytail coming out the top and a like a unicorn horn. And he was the <laughs> most most athletic wrestler on the show and that's the thing it's not just like a bunch it's not okay it's a little bit but it's not just a bunch of people lumbering around in these foam suits like they're actually performing decent wrestling moves uh yeah. you, considering they're like they have a mattress wrapped around them yeah they, yeah. Are, they are <laughs> seriously like i think it, it was either french toast or uh was it hamburger bear what <laughs> there's a there was hamburger bear, bear? What? Yeah. Hamburger Bear's thing. He, he got onto the second uh turnbuckle mm-hmm. and went like up in the air and like he was having trouble like finding the rope to step up because yeah, there's no there's, sight line there's there. none <laughs> no. there's none at all but did, yeah did he call that the patty melt i don't remember <laughs> there's a good point in here uh dave's in here saying furry's a week early it is a travesty this did not happen during furry week oh my god could oh, you imagine dude. which literally happens like across the street yeah so yeah. it's uh yeah no uh, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see this. Um, you know, I ran into these guys uh, other than the gathering, of course, uh, in, in Philadelphia a few years ago. And, you know, they, they almost, they had this stuff on G4. They had, they were on the verge of like really kind of blowing up with this thing. And I'm glad to see it still going and doing well here in Pittsburgh. I, I'm really happy to see that. So they've been at it for a while. They had, a, I believe it was a, in maybe five or six years ago, they had a King of Trios team. In the tournament, I yeah <laughs> yeah wow. They were part of Nash, the original National Pro Wrestling Day. That's where I ran into some of the creators. National Pro Wrestling Day. Yeah, what thank is you. that? Thank you. Uh, I don't think it's an exi- I think that exists anymore. But um, anyways, uh, I don't know. I just drifted into Philadelphia uh, with some people. <laughs> but uh, I forgot my ex thought. Oh, but no, no, I remember finding DVDs like ten years ago with that. What's that? Did you drift there with Logan Shula? Yes, yes, I did. Um, <laughs> that, that's maybe where he got his gimmick. <laughs> yes, yes. That that four a.m. You know, the four a.m. looking for a taxi in the in the the snowy roads of Philadelphia. We were just drifted back to the hotel. That sounds like exactly how. Uh, uh, yo, he didn't have a guitar though. He didn't have a guitar. Thank um, God. but uh, no, uh, check it out. What Terrible. I think. What. What? His, his guitar playing. His guitar playing? Wait, are you? Wait, 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 wait. You you realize where you're at, right? Yes. This is like friend of the show central for 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 the drifter. So. Yeah. Shots have been fired. <laughs> to, tell him to come down here and do something about it. <laughs> oh. oh no, he lives in Florida. Well, so. This is true. Wait. No, he drifts everywhere. He lives on a boxcar. He's everywhere. He has a condo in Tampa Bay. <laughs> That's on track. That's and on track. It's a moving Did condo. Okay, fine. It's a train car. But there, you the there you go. What's that? Just because you have a residence doesn't mean you can't be a drifter. That's true. Yeah, he could get evicted constantly. 
<laughs> so go check it out. Uh, just do a search for Kaiju Big Bell. You'll find it. Plenty of videos online. If they're coming to your town, please check them out. Support this insane thing that that exists. Anything else you want to touch on, uh, uh, Katie? Uh, the Sea World Order. What? They had a tag team. <laughs> what? It's like <laughs> Octopus, and I forget the uh, the European champion teamed up, and they were Sea World Order. <laughs> oh, I think that's oh a perfect. Oh my god, that's amazing. That's yeah. the perfect close to this. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You gotta be a fan. Who, of fun. who was it that opened the show? Do you remember who opened the show? Uh, who was that that opened the show? It was chicken. Oh, chicken noodle soup. Chicken noodle soup. Chicken noodle soup. There was a giant can oh, yeah. of Japanese chicken noodle soup. Mm-hmm. That was who it was. Did, did, Your did expressions. Sea <laughs> <Did>, world. <laughs> Wait. Something smells did he, fishy. Did he perform a ramen con rana? Uh, <laughs> no, but the guy who he was facing had claws and he performed a can opener. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. Even that. Yeah. I love this shit. I love this shit. All right, we have we have a lot of uh, fan submitted stuff this week, so I'm just gonna kind of ride this for a little bit. Uh, first, okay. uh, uh, <laughs> wait, wait. This is news that we know happened, so I'm not getting to get into that. First of all, <laughs> Mauro Ronaldo is gonna be announcing uh, as commentator for NXT. I'm glad to see Thank it. God. Good, Good for him. Thank. God. Keep him away from JBL. He, he's, he can, you know, do a lot of good for that. I mean, we love we love him at CWC. So, um, and not to mention, he's still free to do other stuff. Well, that's like good. He's he's already he's already booked for Mayweather and uh, McGregor. McGregor, that one. Uh, so he's he's getting paid. <laughs> but he, he that's great for him. I I, I honestly. Love him on commentary. Yeah, he's Period. a he's a guy. I'm pretty sure like likes <laughs> wrestling and likes working around it. Generally, yeah. he just doesn't want to be around assholes. He just doesn't, you yeah. know, J- yeah. JBL. He just wants to do his craft the way he wants to do it. Yeah, the best way he can. And really, I mean, I think that's kind of the Matt Striker thing. Like, like Matt Striker, they say, you know, didn't really fit in with the style for WWE. Some people have also said, I can't really take take Matt Striker on, on Lucha Underground. I love Matt Striker on Lucha Underground. I love him geeking out in the middle of a wrestling show like that. Uh, but uh, but it's not for everyone. I mean, but let's just agree right. that every, just about anything's better than Josh Matthews. <laughs> this is also true. This is this is entirely He's, true. And you know what? We can say that because I believe most of us here have been blocked, have been blocked by Matt. Block <laughs> Actually, he unblocked me recently. Missy, uh, am, I, better am I following blocked Josh again. Matthews? No, no, my blocked. new goal is to get blocked by someone else. I'm feeling left out. I need to get yes, blocked. Yes, no, I, I'm just. It's um, everybody. That's, that's everybody's goal. I'm now. just going to keep sending Donald Trump gifts of Pentagon Jr. You know, I seriously <laughs> would love to have Jeremy Borash on the show at some point, but I don't think that's going to happen now because because we're honest um, on the show. <laughs> uh, no, no, Jeremy Jeremy Borash is good. Yes, but I mean, mm. he's yeah, he didn't say great. You you also He's Jeremy Bor- dude Jerry Borsch is the guy no, behind uh, Forever Hardcore. He's done yeah, really but, good stuff but, in wrestling. Okay, he's their, okay, but he's Impact's best announcer, and that's not no, saying anything. No, not not currently. Not currently. Who the Pope? Yes, you guys still oh, watching seriously? Impact? Yes, I'm not even joking. No, no, Ooh. because no, <sighs> and, and this is this is more of a what have you done for me lately thing. Um, in the past four months i've wanted to murder both jeremy borash and josh matthews because they've been doing because that josh angle. because yeah, josh matthews is doing his super michael cole gimmick and oh, jeremy God. borash is being the super facey jr gimmick and neither of it's good hope is, hope is, the, is the driving force of sanity on commentary stop and no not that impact. sanity. i can't you could. I really need to see it till the end. Why? In <laughs> fact, what have you done for me for eight years? Not yeah, Ethan true. Carter is on there, and Laurel Van Ness is so amazing. So when they leave for WWE, are you people. going to stop watching it? Potentially, yes. I mean, you already got... Mar- ha- I'm going to start a Kickstarter for them to leave. leave. First. You already got... I don't think we discussed this. You already got Maria and Mike Kanellis. To come uh, over. Oh true. my God! Have you? Did you see their segment tonight? Yeah. <laughs> Are you not appreciating this? 
No, right, well, no, right, you're we not. Need to so talk good. No. It's so good. Yes. Sorg, Sorg, did we discuss my theory about Maria and like Canales on the show? I don't remember what your theory that, is. That, that it's just a giant rib on Bruce Pritchard. Oh yeah, well, you said that on midweek. I think if you want to very okay, quickly yeah. explain that for everybody yeah. else. Basically, they're they're coming out and they're talking about the power of love. Uh, the reason Mike Bennett when he was in TNA, he didn't win the world title is because Bruce Pritchard came back in and the, this is all rumors and speculation, but probably true. Uh, he didn't like Mike Bennett to be the world champion because Bennett was riding a pretty hot streak. Like he was, he was the guy who beat EC three first. He was doing really good and all that stuff. But then Bruce Pritchard came in and basically destroyed Mike Bennett's push, put him as a side character in the, uh, in the Braxton Sutter and you could say Van you Neff could say angle. you could say drove him to drink. Basically, he he did drive him to be a drunken character at a bachelor party. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's not even a joke. And it was probably some of Mike Bennett's funniest stuff. But then they were basically done with the company. And Bruce Pritchard, as you guys also know, is brother love. So I'm pretty sure that them coming out and saying the power of love is a giant rib on Bruce Pritchard because fuck Bruce Pritchard. Okay, that's it. Coming from the only guy who watches that show. (laughs) Yes. No, 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 no. There's him and there's India. Um, I no, uh, those people in India that went to that show were paid. And they they were paid to see that show. And now they have their own show to watch on the WWE Network. What? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's called Battleground. Is it going to be Battleground? <laughs> it's called Battleground, Battleground because the return of the Punjabi Prison. All right, let's, let's roll this around because I don't think we've done the show since this was announced. Riz, Punjabi Prison, how excited are you? Go. Even Kali got a mention tonight. He's doing he did. He did. Guess what? I forget what the rules are. Oh, oh, oh Riz, I'm so glad oh. you mentioned that because guess what? I looked them up. Like, I, I, this is the thing. I, I, I vaguely remember how like the rules went. I think there's a. I know there's two cages. Uh huh. I know you have to. You have to escape both. Yes. And, and somebody has one to through the door. It never the, ends up. The first cage <laughs> has four doors in it. Has four doors in it. Uh, oh, the the. Four door. Four, four door. door. Four, door. four door. Hold the door. Um, so Spoilers. Basically... Spoilers. Spoilers. God damn it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, 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 no. We will fuck with the TNA fans. We will talk with, fuck with the Glow fans. We will fuck yes. with the, the, the Lucha Underground right. fans. We will not fuck with Game of Thrones <laughs> fans. Okay? That is the line wow. for this show. We don't want that kind of heat. They got a new four season door. coming up. Anyway. Uh, Everyone so does. to escape <laughs> to escape the first cage, you have to tell the referee to open the door. Then it's open for a certain set of time, I think like two minutes, and you have to get through the door in that Can't time. Otherwise, the door closes forever. And there are four doors in the first cage. If all four doors close, four door, you have yes. to escape you the first escape. cage. Four, I remember over these. The I remember all these ludicrous rules. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically kennel from hell with bamboo and extra doors and liver and enzymes. Go. You have to have liver enzymes in order to wrestle in this match. Explain, explain what happened. <laughs> from from my m- recollection, uh, a, le- a liver enzyme epidemic went through WWE, yes. and the person who was pushing the Punjabi prison match couldn't even wrestle Very in it. Hilarious. Yeah, Kali, one of his no, staples. That was the second one. No, I, I didn't know one. there was two. Wrestled I just thought there was there, one. There were two. The first one was there with Batista, two. right? He wrestled in one of those. It was the first one, right? That the was the first second one was Batista. Like who Tinker wrestled in and these? Batista? I think it was the 2006 Great yeah. American Bash that Kali Lashley and maybe someone else. I'm, I'm on a message mm-hmm. board. Uh, we're all replaced on the card due to elevated. Uh, uh, enzymes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold liver on. We're, we're gonna continue with this. We're going down the. If it was Kali, that was definitely a Punjabi prison match. And yes. was it Big Show replaced him? Was it yes. Batista, Big Show? So were, what were, were they just announced as different people? All right, Un- It was or... Undertaker and Big Show in the first one, and Batista and Kali in the second one. Okay. 
Thank you, WWE, for actually having clips of because both of our wait, matches. Undertaker. I remember and... the entirety of Great Collie's WWE or world title push was basically a plethora of matches with both Batista and or Kane in it. Yeah, yes. that's that's the one thing I remember from what 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 from what Kali. happened? What happened? <laughs> What's it wasn't even on camera. <laughs> Why? Who hit somebody with a stick? I see the stick. In what the, the hell? I am trying to get your attention because I'm reading about liver enzymes. Well, there are people in the chat room talking about what we're talking about. Before we say that, can we just say that Missy got Sorg's attention by hitting him in the head with a kendo stick? That is why I have the kendo <laughs> stick. Yep. That's why she's the best producer ever. That is the ever. entire reason That's that I have the kendo reason. stick. <laughs> this is my Sorg is not paying attention to me. I, I, I should have got coffee before this. I you know, There was a Saturday Night's main event before this pay-per-view? Wow. What? What did yeah. the chat room say? Oh, before, oh, before the... Keys was talking about the first was Big Show and Batista. Yes. No, it, it, no, it wasn't. It was uh, Big no. Show and Taker. Uh, right. Oh, no. Okay. Yes, big show. According I looked on to WWE.com, okay. their link. What is a Punjabi oh, prison match? Calling. First, yes. <laughs> the yeah. the only Punjabi in WWE that wrestled before Jinder Mahal. Sure, and he didn't wrestle in the first Punjabi prison. Nope, match. because I, I, liver I don't think you're. I don't think you're counting the greatness that was Tiger Ali Singh. Oh. Nobody does. Well, this is a really good time that we're talking about this because WWE Network. Just posted a picture of the Punjabi prison yes, and it did. indicating that it will house Randy Orton and WWE champion Jinder Mahal at Battleground live on the WWE Network. July I, 23rd. I hope they the upgrade it. All right, um, guys, it was guys, shitty I, to watch. I'm going to make a proposal. Anything. I'm going to make a proposal right now. I'm already married, we Mike. Do, we do, uh, damn it. Um, <laughs> I'm not interested. We do a WMS Part watch pass. party for the Punjabi prison. <laughs> Which one? Both of them. Both. Mm. Both of them. We watch one, then we immediately watch the other. We put it all into a Punjabi prison mega watch party. 32 minutes. Mega watch party. Big Show was the ECW champion at the time. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, and he wow. was the only one. He was the only oh. one on the roster with liver enzymes. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Because he was one now, big nasty bastard. They said they're sure. redesigning the the so Punjabi prison. It's probably oh, I think they have to. Changes. I think I, I think that's what I said. The official WWE thing I saw was it was going to be newly updated. I hope some of those bamboo like bars can come off and be used as weapons. I hope they're they're thinner yes. because. I remember watching the first ones going, where the hell are the people? Because these bamboo sticks are it was kind of fucking to thick, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I can't see. Because especially <laughs> and, when both you know, cages are offset, you can't see anything. You know yeah, <laughs> it's like the little optical. boxes are like little tiny one inch by one inch, and I'm like, it's just black masses moving they might, behind. They might have a cameraman in the ring. can't see. Oh, they do. I'm pretty sure they do. And since, and since we're bringing back crazy concepts for wrestling... Uh, let's bring back the uh, barbed wire steel cage. No, because they don't get, they can't not. do anything with it. Oh, let's I saw not. that live. Let's not. That was bad. It was not great. That was, that was really bad. That was. I mean, they brought that again. A horrible, out. horrible, horrible match. I think yeah. that Maybe was my least favorite live show I've ever attended from WWE. Oh, I was with horrible. you there, Sork. Yeah. No, no, you, you weren't, but she was. No. I was. I, mean, you, I was. <laughs> no, I was in the arena. We were so weird. We also got like floor seats, so that wasn't it was great. Bad. Like nineteenth row, so that was not good. I just watched JBL lay on top of the cage for two minutes, like, <laughs> and then one by going under the cage, yep. yeah, under the ring, yeah. Yep. Wait, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> he <laughs> fell. <laughs> they, I don't remember that one. And he, and he just fell through like, the ring, slid under the ring, and rolled Wait, out. Wait, Big Show fell through the ring. No, yeah. no, he choke slammed, he choke slammed JBL through the ring. Oh, okay. And, and JBL, JBL just rolled. climbed in and exited the ring. Yeah, he rolled out <laughs> from underneath it and was like, "Oh, look, God. I touched the floor. I win." And and Sorg, you were telling me that the mid nineties WWF wasn't better than that crap. It, it was a hard. It was a hard time. Yeah, it yeah. was hard. It's always it was a hard. hard times, Daddy. 
Hot time. I mean, the, the, the shirt was awesome, by the way. Nervous. Yeah. Yes, you're you, making me nervous because you you're doing stuff and you have a stick take, beside you. You already hit me with. You've proven it. that you are capable of being the things. best producer in the <laughs> land. <laughs> Can, can I would like to point out. Want, I'm going to get a shield and uh, throw a shout I out mean, to our sponsor, Slice on Broadway. Look at these beautiful pizza boxes they have now. Look at that. Look at that. You know it. That's a really noisy pizza. And they are dog, solid. I have the dog's attention. Hello. No, he's he's hoping to slice no, the pizza. This is a out. commercial spot. I'm not giving you pizza. Uh, but anyways, my dog loves this pizza. We love this pizza. Thank you to our friends delivering, uh, uh, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza right here in, wait, where is it? Uh, Beachview, PNC Park, and Carnegie, PA. Carnegie. Carnegie, PA. Whatever. Let's be confused with the Right there. Line. Wherever your Wherever pizza Carnegie needs. Carnegie Melon is. Need a <laughs> Carnegie. Yeah. How'd they say Carnegie Melon? Oh, they said they said it incorrectly because they're not from Pittsburgh. Oh, those bastards! Yeah. So they said it correctly because they're from America. Cube-headed <laughs> bastards. Uh, but anyways, check them out. Slice on Broadway dot com. You just gave your shield away. I, yeah. I, son of a. Can can the image for this week's episode just be Missy holding the kendo stick? No. <laughs> Look at this. Maybe I the don't know. Perfect. This is this, this is weird Christ. because. Because Missy and I were at the at the uh, at the at the show at for IWC, we were discussing the first lady show that was on, the, the one where the ladies took over. Yes. Yeah, that was a good. Yes. How dangerous, like how dangerous that looked with with everybody hitting, getting oh, hit wait, with wait, Kendo stick. I'm just yeah, the, and I'm tied up. There. there we go. And LB and Remedy were tied up. Yeah, That's found right. and gagged. Those pictures are still in the MySpace. Ooh, MySpace. What's right. MySpace? Well, <laughs> Larry. MySpace was how I first got in touch with the Mayhem that's, show. We, we had, oh. That's how we rolled. You guys had a uh, MySpace page? You can still find it. Oh, yeah. There's some old pictures on there. I bet if we go back into the comments, you can find some of my first emails you go, to the show. We had, uh, Remedy has pictures in there with a certain WWE commentator and a certain IWGP tag team champion and... Uh, some good stuff on it. Anyways, yeah. uh, we'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. <laughs> After this, that's a big question. <laughs> and some voicemails. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. No, 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 no. Welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We are back. Uh, Chad the Shad, Larry the Mutilator, Katie's just looking at old pictures of us from 10 years ago, Mad Mike and Poughkeepsie, Riz and Monroeville, and the best producer in the world that hits me in the head with sticks. What are you doing? It looks like she has your shield as well. She has what? (laughs) <laughs> she has your pizza shield, sort. Yeah, she kind of has my pizza shield, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and Mad Mike has the big question. Ah, no, stop kicking me! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, wow. Wait, All right. Uh, okay. Um, so, we we, ta- we kind of glanced at it earlier, but um, Lucha Underground stars Drago and King Cuerno are going to be at Slammiversary this year. Shit. Yes. I don't know how this happens. They're probably going to be facing LAX, which will actually be a probably pretty fucking good match. Um, but it got me thinking, I believe Antonio Garza on Twitter and, uh, posted this idea out to all of us. So I'm going to pose it as a big question. If you could do one storyline for Ultima Slammiversario, a crossover mm. of TNA... And Lucha Underground, what would that crossover angle be? <laughs> I'm useless for this one. For, this one. <laughs> for those that know. I'm going to sit out. For those that know. Well, wait. Larry, so- honestly, you can, you can guess. You I can mean. guess because between both companies, they've both done such ridiculous shit, it would probably work. So which two companies is it again? <laughs> TNA and Lucha Underground. Well, they first of all, angle. first of all. Alberto Del, Alberto Patron is dead. I know. This is this is why it's fun, Riz, because he can come back as a zombie. Wait, they killed him? 
Sure. Spoiler well, alert. he was missing. Oh, okay. He was, All right. He was All on right. the missing board. I, I right, mean, um, I think I think a very obvious thing is, uh, you know, LAX comes in and uh, do, 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 man, the, the crew, man, can I can I time slide this thing and the crew's still alive? Sorg, we have a time traveling arrow, Of course, you we can time do. Slide. We do, actually. Uh, no, I just kind of see because uh, LAX has a few guys there. So so let's let's throw uh, uh, them in some trios. OK, um, I. Uh, my the one that I thought of. I'll give you guys some more time to think of other stuff. Um, Ethan Carter actually learns that um, EC two is not his real father. Uh, he is still related to Dixie Carter, but um, in a in a tryst, his name is actually Ethan Cueto, and he is actually the illegitimate son of Dario Cueto. So we get Ethan Carter. Versus Matanza. Oh man! Oh, that is good. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> okay. That Ethan Cueto versus Matanza Cueto. Oh, I want to see it. I want to also see it so bad. I also want to be mad at seeing uh, Sanjay Dutt and uh, Prince Puma. Oh, that'd be really good. That would be a really good match. So I mean, and, and I'm, sword, not getting, sword, I'm not getting deep storyline, but. Sorg, to kind of piggyback off of your um, Conan brings LAX back, um, I think Conan also uh, has Mil Muertes be, uh, get beaten up too because Mil Muertes buried him. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Can't, can't take out all of LAX. All right, so does anyone else have any yeah. other storylines? I got one. You got one? Okay. okay. I'd excited. like to see Prince Puma reenact the storyline of rumble in the bronx where tna is the bad guy and at the end tna dies yes <laughs> prince puma is jackie chan various other people are making mad cameos throughout the film mostly tna is the evil corporation evil villain and they die at the end That's okay it. all right that Think how great. fun that would be. <laughs> it would be. It would be. I, I, that sounds fantastic. I was going to say Jackie Chan in uh, Jackie Chan's <laughs> First Strike because there's ladders in that one. <laughs> but I went with Rumble hey, in the Bronx. Did you see stuff. that new movie coming out with him? Yes. It's going to be awesome. It looks good. What, what's that? All right. All right. I got one. Okay. Um, a foreigner. Bobby Lashley and Mil Muertes. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, I like it. Mm-hmm. I like it. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm a big. I'm a big fan of that. That 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 would be really interesting. <laughs> Riz, do you right. have one? Excellent. All right, I got one. <clears throat> Mascaria Sagrada mm-hmm. versus Oh God, Laurel Van Ness. Oh, Riz, Riz, yes. Okay, a thousand percent yes. Perfect. I mean, I, oh, I think I can God. do it. So we're on the line. She she slaps the shit out of Barbara. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you mean Brenda? Brenda. Yeah, that's what. That's you the one. Okay. That's the one. And, and, and Sork, we also have a couple from the chat room. Okay. And both of these are amazing. Uh, Tina Keys proposes grave consequences. Mil Muertes versus Abyss. <laughs> Sign me up for that shit. All right. All right. And, uh, and Brandon. Uh, it, it's EC3 versus Giant Mundo. If I can, if yes. I, if I can extend a fantasy book, let's just pretend that it's uh, uh, November of last year, and okay. give me the Rabbit Tribe versus the Broken Hardies. <laughs> Ooh, Bobby brought up a good one. <laughs> Sorry. Bobby got brought up a really good one. Oh yeah, Riz, you go mm-hmm. for that one. DJZ versus Angelico. Yes. Ooh, yeah. Yep. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Sign me up. The, the, see that. See, we rag on TNA a lot. They have really good wrestlers, mm-hmm. and TNA's bringing up Evil Lee versus <clears throat> Rosemary, which yes, I'd love to see that. Mm-hmm. Good. That'd be that'd be really really. Who great. is the um the one from uh, Lucha in like the first season? Uh, Hernandez. He, no, he's wearing he's wearing the curler <laughs> hair. Going around kissing everybody. 
What? Oh, Pimpy? Yeah. What? <laughs> Him and Kurt Angle. Oh, no. Hold on. Pimpy and TNA era Orlando Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, wheels, wheels, just you're, you're skipping star. one. You I, are skipping one. I want. I want to say that. Or, I. <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh so I can deliver it with the proper with the proper gravitas. <laughs> All right. Um, Stutters proposes. <laughs> Why can't she say it? <laughs> Why can't she say it? Why can't she say it? She's a disembodied voice. I mean, it right. is in the chat, the, though. The, it's, she put it in the chat, yes, but she also it. texted it to me. <laughs> it is Squiggly Foo Foo Farts versus Julio Slamanock Duck. Slamanock. And I actually assume, I Dutters, I know you're not completely caught up on TNA, so I know who those guys are. <laughs> <laughs> You are legit crying, don't you? That is that is really actually <laughs> that is actually a proposed match of <laughs> Jack Evans and Moose, which I'd be okay with. <laughs> you can decide who is who, but I I know who's who. Good. All right. So you Aaron. were on the same thing, right there, right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're we're right on the same wavelength. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Bobby's also saying Luchasaurus versus Brodus Clay. Which well, would be amazing. Wheels Iris, also has one Tyrus, in Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, Wheels has Sexy Star versus Rosemary. Yes, that would be really good. I also wouldn't mind seeing like Taya versus Lashley. I don't know why. That just seems like it'd be a fun match. Wow. Jeez. Right? Taya versus Lashley? It'd Come be on. something, I, I guess. Wow. Cage I think versus it'd be really Lashley. Good. Cage versus Lashley? Yeah, Ooh, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Gail Kim In an Iron Mariposa. Man match. Oh, God. We have. Gail. Guys, no. Marty and Mariposa versus the Broken Hardies. <laughs> Sibling battle. That would be weird. <laughs> that would be really weird. Marty would have to deal with something that actually flies. <laughs> wow. On that note, let us know your uh, ultimate team up things. Going on, it's Rumble in the Bronx. In Rumble in the Bronx, no, it's ready. Luke. Yeah, yeah, it's all, all set <laughs> to go. We did get a voicemail this week from uh, Daniel Tyree, or as I like to affectionately call him, Daniel Tiger. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's 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 see what he had to say. Hey guys, this is your uh, your biggest fan from Tennessee, Daniel Tyree, and I'm kind of curious about one question that I like for you guys to answer sometime today. Uh, do you guys think that anybody from 205 Live would ever win the WWE Championship or Universal Championship? No. And if you guys say no. yes, then who? I'm just kind of curious, and uh, uh, I'll be gladly to hear your guys' answer on iHeartRadio. All right, guys, take care. Bye. There you go. Thank you so much. Okay. okay. All right. I mean, let me tackle this one first. Good question. The only one I can oh, – actually, I can think of two right now. That could do it. I don't think it's going to happen. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take a whole bunch of, like, a lot of influencing from whatever the hell you want to do. Uh, one is Tozawa. I, I think he has the power in his legs to, and power in everything he can to bring whatever the hell he wants to bring to the WWE. And two... Nobody's going to like this one. Austin Aries. Because he's done it before. I, I'm actually seconding Austin Aries, to be honest. Yeah. He's done, he, he was the one who, who in the X Division, went to the main roster, he per did, se. He did Impact, and he, did, he was a Ring of Honor champion. So, yeah, no, completely. Um, and, and more and more, I, I'm thinking Neville. I see them. They're capable of doing it. I don't see them ever booking that. They're not. No, no, no never. Hey, there that. was a day when Rey Mysterio became the world champ. Yeah, I know. And but he now didn't have his look own how show. stacked the main card is. Yeah, right yeah. I mean, maybe once all of their contracts are up and the talent pool is dropped significantly again, maybe you could do this. Yeah. You could do this. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, all you have to do is just gain a couple pounds. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Eat, eat, eat some slice um, on Broadway and creatively, ice cream. Creatively, here's the best thing that WWE can do. Creatively, they can do whatever the fuck they want. Because <laughs> they can just say, they hey, uh, like you said. The they don't call like it Neville, a heavyweight title anymore. They could be like, Neville, you've been on top of the world for cruiserweight world for, let's say he just keeps going for two years or something. And they'd be like, wow, uh, you know what? He gets bored. He joins one of those crazy battle royals that they have on SmackDown and Raw every once in a while for number one contenderships. Acc- accidentally wins it, wins it by himself. And they say, hey, uh, you know, he goes, ah, I'll beef up. I'll go, you know, I'll get out of 205. And he can win it for four weeks. He can't champion. beef up anymore. The only, the only they one can, I can say see- he can beef up. He doesn't have to beef up. But they can the say, only- hey, they can, if if Matt Hardy can cut weight to win the Cruiserweight Championship, <laughs> he can add five oh, fictional can do, pounds yeah. can we do to get out guys, of 205. Can we do something where he comes back? You guys are discounting someone huge on 205 Live that I think could absolutely do it. Kendrick? Nope. No. Um, uh, Cedric Alexander. I was thinking about that, but he's, yeah. Cedric he's pretty Alexander. small. Mm, he's Cedric not? Alexander cut 40 pounds to be on Yeah, I know. When he was here for he's, Super Indie, oh, really? yeah, he was a bit yeah. bigger. And he was still doing moves like that, right? So, yeah. If, if, yeah. Like, honestly, I think, I think Cedric has the talent. He has the character. I think Cedric Alexander could break away from 205 Live and become WWE champ on SmackDown really easily. If, Especially, if, he's got like he's got like prior relationships with AJ Styles, Kevin Owens, a bunch of guys right. on Sami Zayn. I think that could happen more easily than anyone else because he he's already not established as a like he's not he doesn't have a prior to two hundred five live run like Neville does or something like that. Like Cedric well, if could Finn Balor can really. win the Universal Championship. Then yeah. it doesn't matter who the other guy even looks like because yeah. they'll be around the same body type. Once once Finns wins that belt, you can throw anybody for two oh five at him and have a great match. Exactly. Not saying yeah. you would. Yeah. But again, this is a hypothetical question, so absolutely. But yeah, I mean if you can have someone like Finn Balor who's already won the Universal and is apparently going to have it for a little while. <clears throat> uh they match up a lot better against two oh five live people than say Lesnar Brock or Lesnar. Orton. Or Cena. I mean, those guys are they're much bigger. Or Bray or Samoa Joe. Y- yeah, or yeah. Fifty other yeah. guys that are on the roster mm-hmm. already. Mm-hmm. Katie, any thoughts? Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped paying attention to you whenever we stopped talking about my fancy wrestlers. Her her thoughts my are <laughs> my her, TNA starters. Her, her thoughts are squiggly foo foo farts and mm-hmm. Julio Slam and knock. That's that's that's. <laughs> That's that's Julio. Jack Gallagher in 205 Live Speak. Oh, oh good. Yeah, see, Mike. Oh my God. And Mike and I right there. Yep. Katie, Katie, Katie and I know we know what's up. It is. They they play classical music in uh you know in the hallways and stuff at the theater. That was at the other day, watching the movie that will not be named, and uh, Jack Gallagher's <laughs> music was playing. That, that would have been amazing. Jack if, music that would be amazing if he takes like a boombox with that music everywhere he goes. It was playing in and the he background. He just walked into the theater to watch the movie. He always have classical music, right? It's a the freaking whatever overture that he comes out to, which means it's going to be in a selection of classical music. Mm-hmm. Smart. So. Smart. Yes. Smart. <laughs> also, royalty free, probably. So. So. Yes. Yeah. If, I don't see Beethoven if he had more. Checks. Ability to catch the the eye of like with charisma and and speaking, uh, maybe Tony Nese could do that too. And, and oh yeah, bump up a little bit. The like, ultimate athlete. Oh yeah, or because he has he has the body premier. that the premier McMahon athlete likes. I don't think I've like seen him buff. cut a promo. Uh, recently, he, that yeah, like was, a, a full yeah, like promo. Yeah. I've seen him like react to people, good, but it's because he cuts them with his arms and his legs. And his pecs. <laughs> now you're thinking of the <laughs> premier athletes' pecs. <laughs> just, hashtag just lady things. What's happening? <laughs> We're talking lady things, Sorg. Yes, Sorg. 
Specs and Speaking arms. of lady things, Carella is hair. the second Miss mu- uh, Money in the foo foos. Foo foo. <laughs> Guys, what did you learn from wrestling this week? <laughs> hmm. Ooh. Mm. Yes. Wow, that was Ooh. quick. Um, there's something more awkward than a interview with the Miz. <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> 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 That was that was painful. <laughs> um, did, did you guys hear what what the littler ball was saying, kind of yeah. on mic during the? Uh, yeah, he, he was yeah. dropping some 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 yeah. hard dropped, ends. Dropped yeah, hard and, end. and and during that before nobody that, noticed before, right away. before that even happened, I'm I'm just sitting there going, don't say it, don't say it, because I I had, <laughs> I had that feeling of something going wrong in that. And it sure as hell did. Um, by you- the way, uh, Tina, thank you for uh, uh, pointing out the uh, overture of William Tell is what you were looking for about talking about yes. there, Sorg. Like yes. Yeah. Also, overture of William Tell. Yes, mm-hmm. William Tell. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. What are you? The Williams, what he calls his umbrellas, is what I'm getting at. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, he no, he does that because of William Regal. Oh, yes. well, still, still. still uh, anyways, where were we? I'm sorry. I didn't know. I think I interrupted somebody. Oh, no. That's... No? No, Riz oh. was wrapping up. Riz. Riz, you done, Riz? I wrapped up. Uh, Mike, what'd you learn? I learned that WWE actually does know how to book a proper ladder match. <laughs> it's about time. Too bad it wasn't on they, the... They, 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 they figured it out. It's just yeah. a little, you know. Like, like we got exactly what should have happened the first time around, and this this one was great, but you know, just a little too, little too, little too late. Maybe next time. It's still, it's still a great match. Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, I'm not, I'm not supposed to. Talk about <laughs> his, eye, his eyebrows got B1. fired up. Wait, 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 are you just B1. are you doing wrestling mindfulness over there? Enjoy wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Oh, I Woo-sa. just had Woo-sa. Riz hit me up for an idea for a video series later on. Oh, Chad, wow. what'd you learn? <laughs> Happy <laughs> little suplex. Oh, I can't boy. paint sword. Um, well, let's just say I learned that I uh, have never seen a good Miz TV. There's one that do- it, one doesn't exist. Um, That's not true. No, it's it's a hundred percent true. They're all terrible. There was the one that debuted the Ambrose Asylum that was pretty good. Terrible. That was, that was, good. That was the Ambrose Asylum. That wasn't nice. Miss TV. Oh, okay. Terrible. Um, I, I don't like Miss TV. They're not. They're not good. Miss TV is on SmackDown last year before he before he moved to a Brady decent. Ugh. Not good. But oh, sorry. Also, WWE will capitalize on anything. Good or yeah. bad, and That's some true. people were saying that was the worst segment that Ross had for a while. It it really wasn't. It was just, <laughs> it was just. People can't be that fast to forget. Like, it wasn't bad. This is your life. It wasn't bad. It was just. You can be very indifferent to the whole thing because it's, it's a real person. I don't know. And then everybody in the entertainment business snatched up on it, and some people just don't care. It was bad enough for me to turn it off. Yeah, I mean, that's fine, because you're like, (laughs) I don't know who this guy is. That was part of it, yeah. Yeah. And then the dialogue just... But WWE made that segment just so they could be on TV everywhere Mm -hmm. else today. Yep, yep. No, they will always grab that mainstream attention. Yep. And this is is why, and that brought up a good point, I, I keep on saying they know what they're doing. Yeah. Like, don't, don't you think they know that the great balls of fire logo has balls on it <laughs> and pointed at people's faces. And that segment last night was opposite the NBA awards. And he just, and that yeah. kid just got drafted by the Lakers and his first appearance <clears throat> in that arena drafted by the Lakers is on a WWE program. They know exactly what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Balls. Cause Stephen A. Smith, like I can Gary, Stephen A. Smith was yelling about it today. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Pardon the interruption around the and horn. And that guy has a lot of people listening to him. So yep, yep, getting that out there. And then they have a lot less to, um, ESPN talk mm-hmm. after the coach uh, uh, rescinded it, basically. And that's how you get people to forget about that money in the bank ladder match. <clears> there you go. 
<laughs> Just dropping in bomb. Uh, Larry, what'd you learn this week? <laughs> um, if only it was like Booker T. Oh. <laughs> I learned that wrestling and um, mascot costumes work. <laughs> And that is all. That is all. Mm-hmm. I think I got so, everybody. Um, Producer Missy, do you have anything? I learned that I like fake, fake wrestling. What? I really like Glow. <laughs> oh, you like the f- the fake, fake wrestling? Was based on a true story, fake wrestling. But still. Staged fake studio wrestling. <laughs> yes. I, I like wrestling in studios, real studios, yeah. movie studios. I, <laughs> I like movies. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> So if they did a TV series about making Raw every week, I bet Mad Mike would like it ten times more. Than is Raw. Mark? Oh, wait, wait, wait! Yes, is Mark Marin there? Is Paul Giamatti there? <laughs> Mark Marin is. <laughs> oh, oh, if they have both of those guys on the same. Time. Which one plays Vince McMahon? Oh God! Yes, Ooh. they, they both play Vince McMahon. Paul Giamatti can probably pull off a real good Vince McMahon. <laughs> I say Paul Giamatti plays Vince McMahon, but... And Mark Maron plays Eric Bischoff. No, no. Mark no. Maron plays the voice inside <laughs> inside Vince McMahon. No. <laughs> Paul, Paul Giamatti <laughs> plays Pat Patterson. Yeah. Oh. And Mark Maron <laughs> plays Vince Ooh. McMahon. Wow, that's, that could be fun. Just because he has that kind of range. Tina <laughs> learned that San Diego dropped the ball and did not get a where's your briefcase chance started during Carmel's promo. Oh, okay. yeah. Brandon learned that Cena will be back next week, and I also think SmackDown is leaning towards Beckley Lynch versus Ellsworth. Uh, Bobby I... learned that you can get home at 3 a.m. and get followed by a cop when you're super sleepy, but it's all worth it because wrestling. Wow. You got you, Bobby got in three cars this week. Bobby F. P. Wow. <laughs> also, Sorg, Sorg, one other thing I forgot I had to mention it. Um, I learned that the cheerleaders got a shout out on Ride Along. <laughs> yeah, it did that fucking place. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so you, you, you skipped somebody. Who skip? Dutters. Yes. No. No. Missy. You were yes. like one of the first, right? Yeah. No, yeah. you were the she first was. person. It's been, mi- yeah. Missy, I, Missy learned something. Yeah, I said yeah. I learned something. I, I didn't. I didn't say what I learned. Riz, you were the first person. Oh, Riz. Hi, Riz. Hi. <laughs> Wait, Riz you were the first person. I thought you were first. You went first. You went first. You Holy shit, first. I'm pulling an Enzo on this one. <laughs> Dude. We're going to powerbomb Riz on the ramp. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because my, this one was going to be the Enzo is the, like the is either the going to have a concussion syndrome all over the, all over the place every single week, or he's just the dumbest person. Aw. Can it be both? Could yes. Be. Could be. But yeah. Maybe he's dumb. I thought I, I thought I didn't say anything, but I probably did. Oh, no. No, you definitely did. It's Chad, been a long night. Chad the Shad on the Twitter? Yep. At Chad the Shad. That's where you can find me. I'm semi active. You can eat popcorn on Monday nights. Yeah. Just throw out some gifts here and there. <laughs> yes. Uh, hockey season's over, so it's a lot. It's, it's like been, hibernation. It's been ramped down. Hibernation. Just a tad. Hibernation. Yeah. Mutilator Larry. Yep. He's, on, he's not really on the <laughs> internet. <laughs> he's got people to be on the internet. I, I will him. be uh, future blocked by Josh Matthews very soon. <laughs> I thought you were going to. In, in my head, you, you were about to tell us what one of your future public appearances was going to be. What? I don't know. I just felt like we're going that way. I'm tired. Uh, Katie future Dude public is, appearances. Yes. Where, where can you people can see him, him down the improv? Uh, <laughs> three weeks from I'm tonight. Having a, I'm, uh, having a meeting. Yes, I'm having a meeting. I'm having a meeting. Cheerleaders. I'm having a meeting. Great at sheets on uh, Tuesday. I'll be down at the yeah. waterfront tomorrow. <laughs> Come out and see him, <laughs> folks. Katie Dude is Scare oh, House. No. She does the Scare House live on Facebook. What day? Friday! Got this figured out. Uh, noon. Noon. Close. Lunch June. break. She will not be at the waterfront tomorrow. She will not be at the waterfront tomorrow. No, I will not be at the waterfront. <laughs> so do not look for her. <laughs> producer Missy, you know wife of the to. show on the Twitter. Yes. Yes. The best producer. Yes. She'll be in California. You can find her in California in the next two weeks. Yes. Yay. If she comes home. Yes. <laughs> Maybe forever. I don't know. 
Uh, and of course, Bad Mike four eight eight three on the Twitter. That is me. You can find me. I'm doing things. I'm talking about stuff. I'll be live tweeting Lucha Underground tomorrow night, and uh, I might do a Slam anniversary thing this oh, weekend. Oh, well, hi. I don't know. I'm not you going to pay like for it. But I might. Oh, do don't say that. Yeah. Don't say that. No, no, I'm going to say that. I'm going to let TNA know they are not getting my money. They can't afford lawyers right now. They're tied no, up with the Hardy. That's, that's true. <laughs> and not the well. Riz, Riz plays games. Mm-hmm. Riz plays games. And forgets <laughs> that he went. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and forgets the games that he played. So I last the game you play Riz. Me. And I'm sometimes very, very angry. Very, sometimes very rare occasions on Twitter. Uh, if you in a rare occasion, but still going. not anymore. Just let it all out, Riz. All right, let all it right. all out, man. Um, well, I'll be making a public appearance of sorts on Friday night as far as the game jam over at Alpha Lab Gear. So come say hi. I'll be I'll be pretty much doing this so kind of sign thing. Sign autographs. I will sign autographs. I don't know why you want one, uh, but uh, there you go. That's a thing. Uh, so uh, thank you so much, everybody. Chat room out there. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.